Hello guys, you are welcome to Chris Control Automation. In today's video, we are going to look at how to wire an automatic transfer switch or automatic changeover switch to start a generator. So before we continue, I would want you to watch this video. I will show you something in the video, then we continue from here. So these are the signal cables, okay? This is coming from the negative terminal of the battery and then it will join this cable. Then this cable will send it to the terminal 60 at the back of the screen, the picture that you are seeing, all right? Okay. All right, so these are the components you are going to use. We have the utility side, and then you have the generator side. I am going to use the diagram to do the wiring. After the wiring, I would explain the diagram, and then we we'll see how we are going to use this automatic changeover switch to start the generator. This is the utility line, and then this is the genset line. We tap from the lifeline to one side of the breaker. This is the breaker. This is the life. This is neutral. From the output of the breaker, it goes to A1 on the relay. We can tap from the output of the breaker or from the A1 on the relay to one side of the open contact on the relay. From the other side of the contact, it connects to terminal A1 on the timer. This terminal A1 is terminal 7. We tap from the relay other side to the common terminal of this timer, which is terminal 8. From the other side of the open quarters, that is terminal 6, it goes to terminal A1 on the K1. We are moving to the generator side. We tap from the generator output to one side of the breaker. This side is the generator breaker. So this is the life. From the output of the breaker, it goes to the terminal A1 on the timer, which is terminal number seven. We can equally tap from this side or this side. So we tap from the A1 to one side of the open contact on the timer, which is terminal number eight. From the other side of the open contact on the timer, which is terminal number 6, it goes to A1 on R2. We tap from the timer common contact to one side of the open contact on R2. From the other side of the open contact on R2, it goes to one side of this closed contact on R1. From the other side of the contact, it goes to terminal A1 on K2. We are joining the neutrals together. They both have their separate neutral. It is left with the signal line. The two cables that I was showing in the video at the generator side, this is where you connect it. I hope you can see the battery symbol at the back of this board. This is the control board. So we have the symbol and then we have indicated it minus and plus. Okay, so if you want the generator to start automatically, you connect a cable from the minus. You just put a cable there and then you connect it at terminal 60. Look at terminal 60. The moment you put the cable at terminal 60, the generator will start automatically. So those are the cables I was showing you in the video. They are two. So the cable going from the terminal 1, which is minus, it has a tag of 00. zero. And then the cable connecting at terminal 60 also has a tag of 10. So this is the line, okay? We have this cable that is from the minus terminal or the negative terminal on the battery which is found at the back of the board so this cable connect to one side of this breaker and then from the other side it goes to the one side of this close contact on r1 the other side will go to terminal number 60 on the board maybe your generator will be different from this we assume that this cable is coming from the negative terminal of the battery 
or on the board that is the minus symbol we we'll connect it at the input side of this breaker from the other side of the breaker it goes to one side of this close contact from the other side of the r1 close contact that is cable number 10 it will go and connect at terminal 60 at the back of the board so we assume that this is the cable going to terminal 60 so this one is from the battery minus to terminal 60 at the back of the board let's see how we are going to start the generator when the light goes off so i am explaining the diagram we have the utility side we have the genset side and then we have the signal side so i wrote negative 12 volt or negative 24 volt dc depending on the battery voltage of your generator if your battery is 12 volt you use 12 volt if your battery is 24 volt you use 24 volt dc depending on the requirement of the generator now we assume that the utility power is on so when you close the breaker can to flow through to energize the r1 when this r1 energizes this contact on the r1 will close and then can to flow through to energize the timer when the timer energizes it will start counting the same r1 would open this contact on the signal line at the same time this contact will also open when the preset time reaches this contact will close and then the contactor one or k1 would energize this is the power side you have the utility line the genset line this is the common load so when the k1 is energized this contact will close and then the utility power will be applied to the load so now that our utility power is on we will close this breaker and then close the generator breaker let's see what happens next the moment the utility power goes off the whole circuit will de-energize Therefore, when the R1 is de-energized, this contact it is going to close back. This contact is also going to close back. So as this contact is closed, don't forget that our breaker is already closed. Therefore, the negative supply from the battery, either negative 12 volt or negative 24 volt, will now be applied to the terminal 60. The moment the terminal 60 receives the negative supply from the battery, the generator engine would now start. We have already tapped from line 1 and neutral to this control circuit of the genset. So when the generator voltage is enough, current will flow through to energize this timer, T2. So it will also start counting. After the preset time, this contact will close and then the R2 would energize. When the R2 energizes, this contact will close and then current will flow through to energize the K2. As the K2 is energized, this contact will close. Therefore, generator voltage will be applied to our load. Don't forget that the utility power is already off. So now we are operating on genset. When the utility power is restored back, current will flow through to energize the R1. The moment the R1 energizes, this contact will close. Then current will flow through to energize timer T1. This contact will open. This contact will open. So therefore, when this contact opens, the K2 is going to de-energize. When the K2 is de-energized, this contact will open. Therefore, the generator power will cut off from the load. As this contact is also open, it means that we have disconnected the negative signal from the terminal 60 at the back of the control board. So the moment it is disconnected, the genset will know that we are shutting it off. So it will delay for some time. We call it cool down time. But don't forget that the K2 is de-energized through this open contact. And then the voltage is now disconnected from the load. The timer T1 is also counting. So after the preset time, this contact will close and then the K1 will energize. When the K1 is energized, this contact will close and then the utility power will be applied to the load. The generator engine will still be on for some time. After that time, the generator engine will also go off. So this is how automatic changeover switch works. So now let's test the wiring and see how it will also operate. Right now, the signal breaker is off. At the same time, the control breaker for the genset is also off. I have set the timers, so you can also set it depending on how you want the switching to occur. I am turning on the control breaker for the utility power. The timer and then R1 is energized. After the preset time, the K1 would energize. It is energized now so these contacts have closed now power is at the load as the r1 is energized 
this contact is open then this contact is also open so as this contact is open when we close the breaker the negative supply will flow through and then it will end at this point since the r1 is energized this contact is open so the moment the utility power goes off and then the r1 de-energizes this contact will become closed therefore it will continue to terminal 60 at the back of the control board the moment it receives the negative supply from the battery the genset engine will turn on let's close the breaker so as we have closed the breaker it is assumed that the negative supply is here i am going to turn off the utility power by switching off the breaker as the utility power is off the whole circuit is de-energized the r1 is de-energized therefore this contact is closed now so the negative signal is applied to terminal 60 in that case the genset will start so when the genset starts and then the voltage is okay we get enough 230 volt or enough single phase voltage power will be applied to the control circuit the moment we turn on the breaker it is assumed that the generator power is available at the control side therefore this timer would energize and then it will start to count after the preset time this contactor would energize and then this contact will close therefore the generator power will be applied to the load so let's see how it operates the timer is energized you see now the genset contactor is now on now our genset power is on so let's assume that our utility power is back by switching on the utility breaker so the moment the utility power is restored this r1 is going to energize so when the r1 energizes this contact is going to open and then the signal will be disconnected from terminal 60 at the back of the control board therefore the genset would start to shut down at the same time this contact will also open and then the k2 will de-energize so as it de-energizes this contact would open and then the generator power will be out from the breaker now as the r1 is energized this contact is also closed so the timer is also energized and then it is counting after the preset time this contact will close and then current will flow through to energize the k1 you see that as the utility power is on the k2 is de-energized and then our timer is also counting so it means that this contact is open and then power has been cut off from the breaker so after the preset time the k1 on the utility will energize you see that after the preset time it is also energized therefore these contacts are closed now we are having utility power at the load so after the cool down time of the genset the engine will then shut off so we are assuming that the generator power is now off but we will leave this signal breaker on it should always remain closed always remain closed so engineers this is how automatic transfer switch or automatic changeover switch is wired you can also install a phase failure relay on the utility side to monitor when the phases are down okay so in the next video i am going to show you how to wire a phase filler relay i thank you all so much for having the time to watch this video if you enjoyed the video and then this is the first time you are seeing this channel then i will urge you that you subscribe you hit on the subscribe button and then you hit on the bell icon you choose all to turn on your notification okay and then you like the video you put down your comments and you share the video to your friends okay so we will meet in the next video thank you